All right, guys, what's going on? So if you're here, you're trying to max out your plank as part of the ACFT, and just to get a little buy-in from you guys, we're gonna go ahead and knock out a plank for three minutes and 30 seconds, which would be on or around the max standard. I think it's more like 320 for me, but we're gonna go for 330 today, just so I can get that buy-in for you guys. We'll do it together, and after that, I'll tell you how to max your plank. Here we go. All right, ready? And go. Two minutes left. <laughs> Whew. One more minute, let's go. <laughs> Thirty seconds, baby. Come on, let's go. You can do anything for thirty seconds, right? My God. Five, four, three, two, one. Ooh. All right. Uh, three minutes and thirty seconds. All right, guys. So I can do this now. Let me tell you what I do in order to be able to get that done. Here we go. Oh man, golly. I freaking hate the plank, guys. That is not a fun event to do whatsoever. All right, guys. I know that was a quick down and dirty intro, but I really did just want to secure a little bit of buy-in from you guys before we got this video started. You know, I'm always trying to uh, lead by example, and I definitely believe that you should be able to, to do what you preach, right? Like you should be able to do the things that you say are possible to do. So there you go. I just got the three minutes and 30 seconds done, and I actually just got back from a gym workout and still managed to do that. So that means that whatever I'm doing is working, right? So let's go ahead and talk about those things. All right, so the plank event is part of the Army Combat Fitness Test. Probably, unanimously, the most hated event of the test. Speaking for myself and for many that I've talked to out there, that is definitely the case. It's weird because it's the second to last event uh, of the Army Combat Fitness Test, right? The event right before you finish it up with the run. And doing a plank in normal circumstances, just as part of your training, is typically not that difficult. But to hold that thing for three minutes and 30 seconds is just torture for three minutes and 30 seconds, right? I don't know, that's how I feel about it. I don't like the plank event at all, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna do my very best to max that thing. So first things first, I think it's really important to understand what the standards are for this event so that you know exactly how you should be training and what you should be training for, right? You wanna to train to standard. You wanna to train to exceed the standard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read the standard for this event verbatim, okay, as directed by the Army, so that we have no doubts in our mind exactly what the standard is. Bear with me here, but if you were ever unclear with the standard whatsoever, you won't be after this. All right, here we go. Starting position. On the command, get ready, hands must be on the ground, either in fists with pinky side of the hand touching the ground, or lying flat with palms down. No more than the graders fist width apart. Elbows will be bent, aligned with the shoulders, forearms flat on the ground forming a triangle. Hips should be bent with one or both knees resting on the ground. Execution. On the command get set, the soldier lifts both knees off the ground and moves the hips into a straight line with the legs, shoulders, head, and eyes focused on the ground, similar to the front leaning rest. The soldier's feet may be up to the graders boot width apart. Elbows are aligned with the shoulders together with the forearms forming a triangle. Ankles are flexed with the bottom of the toes on the ground. The soldier maintains his or her body in straight alignment from the head to the ankles. The fingers on the left hand may not be interlocked, interlaced, or touching with the fingers on the right hand. Hands no more than a boot width apart. On the command, go, the soldier moves into the proper plank position. To maintain proper plank position, the head, shoulders, back, hips, and legs must remain in a straight line position from head to heels throughout the event. Feet, forearms, and fists, palms must remain in contact with the floor throughout the event. As long as the hands remain in contact with the ground, soldiers may change hand position from the fist pinky side down to palms down during the plank. The plank event is terminated if the soldier touches the ground with any part of the body other than the feet, forearms, or fists and palms, raises a foot or hand off the floor, or fails to maintain a straight line position from head to heels. 
Graders will give one verbal warning to correct failure to maintain the proper playing position or if the hands feet slide from the required position. If the soldier is unable to correct the deficiency or maintain the proper plank position, the soldier's performance will be terminated. Shaking or trembling as a result of maximum exertion is permitted as long as the proper plank position is maintained. All right, guys, there you have it. I know that was long and draining, but now you know the exact standard, right? That's really important as we train up for this event. All right, guys, hopefully I have you set up pretty good there. This is the only place in my uh, temporary domicile that has like a rug so I don't mess up my elbows as I do this, right? But it doesn't matter, we still got the flag up, right? It doesn't matter where we do this, all right? As long as the information is solid, and I promise you this information is gonna be solid. All right, so first things first, what are we actually relying on and using as we're doing the plank event? Obviously we're using the core, right? That kind of goes without saying, but a lot of people don't realize that it's your hip flexors that you really do rely on a lot as you're doing this exercise. And you wanna be able to rely on them for a long period of time. So it's really about that muscular endurance. So that's what we really need to train in order to get better at the plank. So if you're somebody that's struggling to meet that three minute and 30 second standard or whatever the max is for you, I wanna give you three solid alternate exercises to the plank that are gonna help you to extend that time out. And don't worry, I'm gonna go into the actual execution of the exercise and give you some tips there as well. But I just wanna give you these alternate exercises now so you have them for tools in your tool bag for later okay I don't want to I don't want you guys to lose this stuff first exercise is the boat hold looks like this all right this one is focusing on the maintenance the endurance strength holding that muscle movement right at your hip flexors and also keeping the core engaged for long periods of time it's exactly what you're doing during the plank event I do these all the time, like at least once a week I'll do these for one to two minutes at a time, usually three to four uh, sets at a time. This is one of those exercises where you will definitely feel the shake. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm shaking already. It's only been, what, maybe 45 seconds and I'm already shaking. But this is one of those exercises that's gonna help you not only physically get used to doing an isometric hold like this, but it's gonna help your mental game as well. You're gonna get used to just dealing with <laughs> the pain. So the boat hold, I want you guys to keep that as a tool in your toolkit. Practice this. All right, next up is probably one of my favorite ab exercises. If you ever watch any of the follow me workouts that I have on this channel, you'll see that I, I do this exercise on there all the time, really just because it's such a beneficial ab and hip flexor exercise to do, and you can get good at it really fast. So here we go, it's the leg lift. I'm gonna say real quick, I realize that if you're not used to doing an exercise like this, it's gonna be difficult to get good at at first, but if you just stick to it, you're gonna get better, okay? I want you to be able to get to the point where you can do a isometric hold leg lift, looking like this. Lie down on the ground, back on the ground. You're gonna put your hands underneath your tailbone just to give you a little stability there, and you're gonna lift your legs about at a 45 degree angle and hold. Again, you should be able to do this for anywhere between one to two minutes or longer. And it's the same concept as a bow hold. You'll start shaking within the first 10 to 20 seconds, but the longer you hold it, the more benefit you're gonna get. Now, if doing a leg lift hold like this is just a little outside your wheelhouse, you're just not quite there yet, you can't hold this for two minutes, I want you to practice doing just leg lifts, okay, for reps. Keeping your feet about maybe two to three inches off the ground, Put them all the way up until your toes go just past your forehead. All right, and then back down and back up. You should be able to knock those out at least 10 reps at a time with maybe 30 seconds rest in between and doing four sets. And once these become easy for you, you'll be able to graduate to an isometric hold. All right, I gotta move you guys for this last one because I wanna get a better angle for you. This one is gonna be the plank sway, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and get down at a normal plank according to the standards of the ACFT that we just outlined, right? You're gonna move up to the whole position and I want you to get used to being able to do a controlled, deliberate, and slow sway side to side with your hips, keeping your feet on the ground for about three to five seconds per side. That should be something that you should be able to do for at least a minute to two minutes consistently without stopping. Just swaying back and forth <laughs> for two minutes or more is where I want you to get to. And it should be controlled, it shouldn't be like this. 
right? It should be nice and slow. Again, three to five seconds per side, consistently and continuously. All right, guys, those are my top three alternate exercises that you should be doing if you want to get better at the plank event. Again, I just wanted to give you those up front as ammunition and something to train with as you're moving forward into maximizing your potential for the plank event. All right, guys, so we already went over the standards for what a plank should look like or what needs to look like as you're doing the event, right? So we don't need to really go into a review of that. But what I will give you is three solid tips, three things that I focus on after keeping the, the right form and everything. Three additional things that I focus on to help me get through a three minute and 30 second plank. And then I also have a couple bonus tips to throw at you, but those are kind of tips that, you know, you may or may not get away with. It just depends on the environment in which you're taking the tests. But I'll make sure to give you those as well after I give you these three guaranteed things. All right, so the first two tips are things that you need to get right, right as you start the exercise. Right when you start the event, you gotta have these things right or you're just gonna screw yourself over. All right, so as you're setting up, right, I want you to focus on having your elbows at a triangle. Just like the instructions say, focus on having your elbows out at a triangle, roughly at around a 45 degree angle. That's gonna give you more of a base than if you were to try to keep your elbows in. You're gonna be focusing more on using your shoulders if you're keeping your elbows in like parallel. So I want you to keep them out like a triangle, okay? Really focus on doing that. I like to keep my hands in a fist and I like them to be right underneath my face. That's about where the hand placement should be, right underneath, right where my eyes are. See that? That's where they should be. So that's the first tip. Make sure you're at a triangle with your elbows so that you can establish that base up at the front. Now, making sure that you're establishing a base in the, in the back, right, at the feet. When you lift up, a lot of people have the tendency to kind of lean forward. Now my face is not where my hands are, right? Well, I don't want you to do that because you're putting a lot of pressure on your shoulders. I'm already feeling it because I'm so far leaned forward and it hurts. I want you to lean back, all right? Focus on leaning back. You're going to stretch into your hamstrings. It will bring your eyes back down to where your hands are. That's how you know you're in the right place, all right? Make sure you're not leaning forward on your toes. You want to be leaned back. This is right. This is nice and comfortable. Or as comfortable as it can be, I guess. Now, third tip, I really want you to focus on your breathing. I want you to have nice, slow, deep breaths. I want you to focus on breathing in as deep as you can. Holding it for a couple seconds, then releasing. And that's how I want you to breathe, like Lamaze. And really focus on doing that. Keeping deep breaths like that is just gonna help you keep your calm. It's gonna help with that oxygen flow as you're continuing to put the stress on a good majority of your body. And it's also gonna help you release some of that tension that you're feeling in your core, okay? A lot of guys, myself included, especially at the end, you know, at about the three minute mark for me, I start to hold my breath at times because I'm just, my core is just so locked up that I end up like holding my breath. That's something you want to avoid and if it's unavoidable, if it's eventually it happens to me around the three minute mark, like I said, it becomes unavoidable, but I don't want to start getting into that habit at like the two minute mark because then I'm just setting myself up for failure and I'm just putting myself through more pain. So really focus on nice, long, deep breaths. And you're going to see if you do those three things, your plank is going to get much easier. Do it when you practice your plank. All right, so those are the main three like guaranteed things that are gonna help you with your plank. Um, but I do wanna give you those last two bonus tips, right? Again, disclaimer, it just depends on the environment that you're in uh, and you're greater if they're gonna let you get away with this. But if you are in that sort of environment, they're definitely gonna help you <laughs> max out the plank event. All right, so here we go. And they're not against the rules technically, okay? It's just like I said, you know, some graders are more strict than others and that's just the way it goes. Number one, you're in the plank position. The one we talked about, remember, lean back, elbows at a 45 degree angle triangle, head down, breathing in deep. If you start feeling cramping in the hamstrings or in the core, it starts getting too tight, something that might help with that, all right, at least it helps with me sometimes, is shaking the toes or doing tiny little step backs with your toes, just to help shake it out. You probably can't see that, but I'm gonna exaggerate it so that you can see. I'm kind of doing this, but just with my feet. But I'm doing real small, real small. 
only for maybe five seconds and then stop because you don't want to get busted. It doesn't necessarily say you can't do that in the rules, but hey, you don't want to risk it, right? But that'll help if it's something you can get away with. And the other bonus tip is I would say find a song that you like that is three minutes and 30 seconds long and have that playing while you're doing your event so that you know how far along you are in the event and your focus is on something else rather than the suckage of the plank, right? Again, that one's really gonna depend on the environment. They're gonna let you have a song on or not. But hey, if you're, you know, just with your unit or with a friendly environment, they don't care if you listen to music, I would definitely recommend doing that. You know, I'm a big fan of listening to music when I work out, so I, I don't necessarily personally see the problem with doing something like that, but just never know, right? All right, now I know we talked about alternate exercises and I talked about the way that your plank form should be, but you can't forget just actually practicing the plank itself on a regular basis. That doesn't mean you need to practice maxing it out every time, okay? If you're just doing a plank hold for you know, a minute at a time, maybe for four sets, that's perfectly fine. That's gonna help you get better, absolutely. But you do need to test yourself regularly to see how far you can hold that thing to standard. And my advice is to do it after a hard workout because that's how you're gonna be tested, right? You know, training the plank like at the front of your workout is good and all, but you're gonna see a dramatic time difference if you train it in the back end of your workout. And that's really where you need to focus on training it the most. Because we all know by the time you get to the plank event, you're not gonna be fresh. You're already gonna be sucking from the other events of the ACFT. And it's especially true with the plank because you just got done maxing out that SDC, right? So you're already winded, your core is already a little bit on fire, and now you gotta just put it through some more pain for three minutes and 30 seconds. But that's okay, just train like that regularly. You know, I'd say like maybe once a week, uh, after a good workout, just come home or do, do it before you leave the gym, max out your plank. See if you can hold that thing in three minutes and 30 seconds, or at least as long as you possibly can. See what kind of gains you can make over time. Challenge yourself with it, you know, have fun with it. Turn it into a habit and it will become more and more bearable over time, I promise you. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, you know, I am not a huge fan of the plank event, but that doesn't matter. It's still something that we gotta get done and it's totally doable if you just Put a little time into it and focus. But that's it guys, that's how I managed to max out the plank as part of the Army Combat Fitness Test. Those are the things that I think will definitely benefit you as well. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this information useful, it really does help out the channel and to make sure to put this information in front of the faces of the people that need to see it. As usual, if you have any additional questions or if there's something that I just wasn't clear enough about or if you have any additional tips and tricks of your own that you know would work, please don't hesitate to put that into the comments as well. Here's some other videos as part of this Maxi ACFT series. I definitely think you should go check these out after this one. It's time for me to go get my recovery chow on. I do like my recovery, you know what I'm talking about? Besides that, I've got nothing else for you. Continue to make it your mission to exceed the standard, and I will see you on the next one.